member for what we believe to be a problem toe. I'm joined this morning by our very own royal expert, Terry Devlin. Good morning, Terry. Good morning to you, Peter. <laughs> Terry, you've been a friend, some would say a confidant of the royal family for a number of years. Can you give us an insight into what's been happening this morning? Oh, yes, Peter. Well, the prince will have been conveyed to the medical premises by car, or if the injury was deemed serious enough by ambulance, sometime well in advance of the 10.15 start of the procedure, possibly around 10, 9.30, maybe, or on the safe side, belt and braces, 9 o'clock. <laughs> Right, uh, and can Harry expect a visit from the Queen today, or...? Oh, yes, he could indeed be visited by Her Majesty, or indeed the Duke of Edinburgh, <laughs> Prince Charles, Prince of Wales, his consort Camilla, <laughs> Duchess of Cornwall, <laughs> Princess Royal, Duke of York, <laughs> Earl of Wessex, Duke of Kent, <laughs> Lady Sarah Chateau, formerly Armstrong Jones, <laughs> Zara Phillips, her brother Peter Phillips, maybe even Mike Tindall, <laughs> Maybe Austin Healy <laughs> or Danny Cipriani. Good, right. Well, uh, more on the Prince and his problem toe in a few moments. First, let's get the lowdown on that massacre in Riyadh. Or oh, Tom Packerboys. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. We must apologise again if you found any of those images disturbing. It really is an appalling situation, really uh, appalling. News just in that Prince Harry has been discharged from King Edward VII Hospital in Windsor following an operation for what we believe to be a foot injury. With me is Terry Devlin, royal expert. Terry, uh, <laughs> a, a privilege to have you. God, it's a great pleasure to be here. Hope we're not, uh, not keeping you from any royal duties? Or? Not today, no. <laughs> Good, so, um, could you tell us, just give us a, a, a rough idea of what the Prince will be doing right now? Yes, Peter. Well, having been formally discharged as a patient, the Prince will now be making his way back to one of the royal households. <laughs> Clarence House. Balmoral, perhaps, <laughs> Windsor Castle, or Highgrove, Sandringham, Osborne House on the Isle of Wight, Burke Hall, the Queen Mother's private retreat near Balmoral, Chakras, <laughs> Castle Howard, Alton Towers. <laughs> Great day out for all the family. Whereupon he would then be in residence, as we call it. And, in fact, I imagine he may very well be imminently be having breakfast. If not at this time, then very much, if you like, certainly around this time. <laughs> Any idea of what that breakfast might consist of? Um... Well, of course, knowing the young Prince Harry like I do, that very much depends. <laughs> if His Royal Highness were to feel that perhaps he might benefit from a heartier, more protein-based breakfast, then he could expect to be able to choose from, I don't know, anything from sausages, bacon, beans, tomatoes... Eggs? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> In my experience, eggs have long been part of the possible diet of various members of the Royal Household over many, many generations. Queen Victoria, as we know, for example, there's every reason to believe, may have incorporated eggs into her official routine. Okay. OK, but uh, <laughs> presumably they don't all sit round and tuck into a full English every day. Oh, 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 no one might well imagine that there might be perhaps a more continental option available. <laughs> also, theoretically, muesli or other <laughs> breakfast cereals might also be part of the offering. As also would be fruits of the kind many of us are familiar with ourselves. Oh. <laughs> Presumably even just a piece of toast. There's absolutely nothing to suggest that that's not a very, very real possibility for the Prince. <laughs> or, uh, uh, just quickly, tea, coffee? It could easily be either. <laughs> or hot chocolate. I see. More on that story later, but first, more news on the harrowing aftermath of those Asian floods. Or just... <laughs> harrowing pictures, I'm sure you'll agree. Simply harrowing. Um, still with us, of course, Giving us the inside track on Prince Harry's alleged foot operation is royal expert Terry Devlin. Terry, what would be the Prince's <laughs> state of mind at this time? Well, Peter, certainly thoughts will be going through his head. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Various different thoughts, in all probability. Such as? S such as, for example, well, let's see, badgers, <laughs> flowers, the plight of Africa, Football? How long do bays live for? <laughs> what kind of metal a pound coin's made of? <laughs> string and its tensile strength. Byrolls. Birthdays. And quarrying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
You don't know, do you? <laughs> no. Forgiven for thinking that after all the tributes, biographies, documentaries, even conspiracy theories about Diana, Princess of Wales, not another word could be written about her. Well, you'd be wrong, because our very own royal correspondent, Terry Devlin, <gasps> has now added his version of events to the canon. Terry, you were, you were very close to the princess, Oh, you? very, very, very close indeed, Jeremy, that's right. In fact, it would be fair to say that Diana, then the Princess of Wales, formerly Lady Diana Spencer, latterly Her Royal Highness, the Queen of Hearts, <laughs> looked upon me with those bewitching eyes, very much as her most trusted member of the Fourth Estate. Sheep-like as she was herself, I think she recognised in me, I like to think, a kindred sheep, or at least very much in sheep's clothing amongst an otherwise wolf-laden breath pack. <laughs> Right, so you've written a book revealing intimate details about her private life. That I have, Jeremy, that I have. <laughs> it's called The Crumbs from Under the Eye Table. <laughs> I see. I'm flinging wide the gifts, lifting the lid, as it were, shining a torch whence ne'er hath light been cast afore, <laughs> on a very private face of the then Royal oh. Highness, Princess of Wales. <laughs> and these um, revelations mainly centre around a collection of personal effects which came into your possession following an unforgettable day at Kensington Palace in 1988, correct? Uncannily so, Jeremy, yes. So, uh, <laughs> what sort of things are we talking about? I mean, photos, diaries? I feature, amongst many, many, many other things, a TV guide from September the 18th, 1988, <laughs> in which the princess, I believe, may be responsible for having circled an episode of Howard's Way. <laughs> One or two cotton buds from the staff toilet. <laughs> a toilet, it might be said, which could have been used by none other than the Princess of Wales herself. Um, and that's it, is it? Oh, no, 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 far from it, no. A sachet of oil of Yule from before it was Oli. Uh, and I believe there's a, a private letter from St James's Palace which you're reported to have under lock and key at an undisclosed location. Does the book give any clues as to the content of that? Let us just say that it represented an opportunity for the princess. It was, Jeremy, an invitation for her to transfer the entirety of her balance to a rate of 13.4%, which it must be remembered <laughs> was a very, very competitive rate at that time. Junk mail. If you wish. Uh, <laughs> everyone gets junk mail. Well, this is a book very much for everyone. <laughs> she was, let us not forget, the people's princess. Princess. Yeah, um, great. Well, uh, thank you, Terry. Uh, in a moment, we'll be... <laughs> Meeting a man whose campaign to save a school for the blind very nearly landed him in prison. <laughs> well, today's shaping up to be one of the more controversial days in the Queen's reign. She's honouring the invitation to despotic African leader Maxwell Bugana to attend a state dinner at Buckingham Palace. Now, we can't make contact with our chief political correspondent in Zapoto at the moment, but to discuss this very thorny issue is our royal correspondent, <laughs> Terry Devlin. Um, <laughs> A lot of people are very angry at the Queen's decision. Do you think uh, she'll be aware of the implications of having a leader of a murderous regime at the royal table? Well, I'm in no doubt that Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth of the United Kingdom of these home nations, Queen Regnant of the Commonwealth realms, of course, will be aware of the magnitude of the implications, either fully, partially, wholly, <laughs> fractionally, totally, or perhaps, if you like, not at all. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, uh... <laughs> Let's move on to the banquet. Ordinarily, royal protocol would demand a minimum of seven courses, but there have been rumours of a reduced menu, which could be interpreted as a, well, so we say, a slight towards Mr. Bagana. What's your view? Oh, well, a, a reduced menu could mean any number of things, uh, uh, Jeremy. It could mean anything from the full traditional seven courses all the way down to six, five, four, <laughs> possibly three. I'm not going to rule out two. And gun to my head, one. If I were a betting man, though, I'd say anything from three to six. Or seven, not including both. <laughs> no, no, no. See, what I'm trying to ascertain is whether it'll be, if you like, um, the full state banquet or a more token affair reflecting the, the dubious status of Mr Bagana. Uh, you know, what, what will it entail? Oh, well, that's, of course, a very, very complex issue, uh, Jeremy, and very hard to know for sure. A crescent of crisps may well be laid out. <laughs> Dips, dips, very a la mode nowadays. Uh, but regarding the menu, I think it's fair to assume that chicken will play a role there. <laughs> Although whether that be in a coronation or a mini Kiev capacity, I'd be loath to commit. 
I'd also imagine that over the years, the royal banquets have featured beasts of the field. I'm talking beef, I'm talking lamb, I'm talking pork. Or am I? Is that applicable here? Goat, of course. <laughs> Venison, maybe. And naturally, the sausage, maybe, in the guise of salami. Or just the good old honest straight up and down banger that you and I and so many countless thousands are familiar with ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm just hearing that our link is back up and we can go over live to our chief political correspondent who's just managed to get across the border into Zapoto and is waiting to speak to us on the satellite phone. Or cheese or bread. I mean, no limit there. Mr Bagano could quite literally keep coming back for more, couldn't he? Cheese or bread. Paul, I understand you've just experienced some guerrilla fire. A pretty force! <laughs> if you've just joined us, it's a very special edition of the programme today. We've got live coverage of all the build-up to this afternoon's royal wedding. Time now to get the inside story from royal expert Terry Devlin. Terry... <laughs> It's, it's still relatively early in the day, but it looks as though everything's in full swing in central London. Oh, you're absolutely right, Jeremy. In fact, the revelry here started as early as last night as the guests very much arrived for an, if you like, eve of wedding party at Clarence House. <gasps> Stephen Fry, Will Young, Michael McIntyre, Leona Lewis, Jules Holland, these just some of the names of people. <laughs> yeah, and did you talk to any of the guests, Terry? <laughs> Sanjeev Bashkar, Mike Tindall, Ron Atkinson, Lady Sarah Chatto, Firmly Armstrong Jones, the Sugar Babes, the Earl of Ulster, Tara Parma Tomkinson, Viscount Severn, Rory Brender, just some further names of people. All of them, no doubt, wound up in the splendour of this, if one might call it, and I think it's by no means overstating it to do so, the latest of the money money weddings in the Royal House of Windsor. Yeah, so, so just Will everyone ask... turn up? Peter Phillips, son of the Princess Royal, very much expected. Terry. Viscount Linley, offspring of the late Princess Margaret and the Earl Snowden. And, of course, his Royal Highness, the Duke of Gloucester. Yep. And Archbishop of Olomouc sadly won't be there on account of his having died in 1831. But yeah. Princess Eugenie and her cadre of royal bodyguards very much will be there. Did I see Michael McIntyre? Yes, yes, you did. And what about the Prince? I imagine at this late stage even you're not going to be getting too close to the groom, Terry? Well, on that score, I think it's safe to say that you are absolutely 110% correct, Jeremy. I shall be staying well away, giving the prince and his immediate family, the royal family, the space that they need in accordance with royal protocol and, indeed, not one but two restraining orders. <laughs> I am now being singled out for special singular attention by one of Her Majesty's constabularians. I won't tell you again. <laughs> I'm hearing Terry Devlin is back with us now. Terry, very quickly, royal honeymoon plans? Oh, well, Jeremy, like money a groom before him, the prince will have tried to keep this a secret from his royal bride, but I can tell you this, he will have had the option of choosing from any number of favoured royal destinations, the Maldives, Mystique, Madeira, Malta, the Falkland Isles, the Isle of Wight, Balmoral, the Royal County of Berkshire, the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, <laughs> Dubai, or indeed any of the many, many, many holiday destinations that do exist within the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Right, or indeed you. the... <laughs> Um, Terry Devlin there, our royal correspondent. Now, more news on those dreadful Californian mudslides. Is he okay? Is he... <laughs> <laughs>